Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. Uh, we're covering uh, section 3.4.1, the second part after example 10 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. I'm going to move fast, but you can always rewind. Thumbs up and share if you appreciate my effort. As always, uh, questions you can go on a video response or in the comments. And let's get started. So I'm going to show you how to coax out the dipole, quadrupole, octopole terms um, from you know, given a volume density, um, give, given the potential from a volume density of some arbitrary density, right? And so we start with this formula. So V at P is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught, the integral one over curly R rho d tau. Again, the curly R is the distance from the particular bit we're integrating to the point that we're interested in. So uh, we can rewrite, of course, curly r squared using law of cosines as r squared, which is the distance to the point from the origin, plus uh, r prime squared, which is the distance from the origin to the bit we're integrating, minus 2 r r prime cos theta, which is the angle between these two uh, vectors. Um, and rewriting it by extracting out the r squared, we get 1 plus r prime over r, you're going to see that a lot, squared, minus 2 over r prime over r, cos theta. Hope nothing surprising here. Um, as kind of a shorthand, as we do the, poly, the, the binomial expansion bit, I'm going to take this bit and call it Epsilon, not epsilon, not no, just epsilon. Okay, just a just a placeholder, and uh, we can actually express epsilon as equal to. We can bring out an r prime over r uh, of r prime over r minus two cos theta. So we can just bring out that common term there. Continuing on, so now we have r is equal to. Um, r squared is equal to r squared times 1 minus epsilon and then we take the square root we get r times 1 minus epsilon to the 1 half power and we take the inverse we get 1 over r times 1 minus epsilon to the negative 1 half power and now we apply the polynomial expansion so this is equal to 1 over r times uh, 1 minus 1 half epsilon then we have a plus term here, plus we have minus one half times minus three halves over two. Um, that's three eighths epsilon squared. And then minus, let's see, minus one half times minus three halves times minus five halves, that's 15 uh, over eight, 16, five. Okay, it ends up, oh, we have to divide by three, so that's five. I have to divide by 6 actually. 5 sixteenths epsilon cubed. And then there's other terms as well, but we're not, gonna, we're not interested in those right now. Um, we're going to find a pattern and then solve it. So at this point, we can substitute in our epsilon that we discovered, uh, apply the powers, then distribute the fractions, and arrange the terms to get something uh, interesting. Um, so I'm going to actually do this, and this will take quite a bit of while. So just, you know, maybe you want to fast forward the video or whatnot. But, uh, so we have one minus one half. Um, I'm going to rename. Uh, let's see. I'm going to call these guys gamma. Uh, no, let's call it something else. I can think of something more excited about that. Eh, let's just call it gamma. <laughs> I don't want to write. So we have one half of gamma times gamma minus two cos theta plus uh, 3 eighths of gamma squared, gamma minus 2 cos theta squared, and then minus 5 sixteenths of gamma cubed times gamma minus 2 cos theta cubed, plus some other terms we're not interested in right now. Um, can I write this on a single sheet of paper? Probably not. So I'm going to start on the next bit. So we have 1 over r curly is 1 over r 
times one minus one half. Let's distribute things now. So we have gamma squared minus two gamma cos theta. Remember, gamma is just r prime over r. That's the one half term plus three eighths. So we have gamma squared times, let's see, the square of this. So we have gamma squared minus four gamma cos theta plus four cos squared of theta minus five sixteenths of gamma cubed times, let's see, gammas, there's three gammas. There is uh, negative two times two times two is eight gamma squared cos theta plus eight, no, uh, not eight, it's uh, four plus four plus four is, uh, this is, hold on, this isn't right, this is three of these, this is six. So we have 12 here. Am I right? I'm, I'm double checking my notes here. Gamma of cos squared theta. And then finally we have um, minus 8 cos, cos cubed of theta, cos cubed, plus some other terms. 1 minus 1 half gamma squared plus gamma cos theta uh, plus, let's distribute these guys now, 3 eighths gamma fourth minus 3 halves gamma cubed cosine theta plus 3 halves gamma squared cos squared theta minus five sixteenths gamma to the sixth plus five sixteenths, that's fifteen over eight gamma to the fifth cos theta minus five times three fifteen over four gamma to the fourth cos squared theta last one plus five halves of gamma cubed cos cubed theta okay and plus some other fun stuff that we're not interested in um, equals now what we're going to do is we're going to combine these based on how many gammas they have so we have one over r one plus let's see there's only one gamma term gamma times cos theta plus the gamma squared terms. Let's start with the, so there's a gamma squared, there's a gamma squared, so we have um, three halves cos, this isn't right. Is that right? That is right. Three halves cos squared theta, that's right. Minus the one half, so we got that guy, we got that guy, we got that guy. Now let's do the gamma cubes. So we have a gamma cube there. We have a gamma cube over here. So we have five halves cos cubed theta minus three halves cos of theta. That's the gamma cube. That's the gamma cube. And then we have gamma four terms, but we're not gonna we're not gonna count those because we actually didn't expand beyond that. So we have some other stuff. Okay. Now look at that. Look really really hard at that. Okay. That's the zeroth Legendre polynomial. That's the first one. That's number two, and that's number three. So we get this funky donkey awesome uh, formula times the sum of uh, we have uh, so we're going to go l equals zero to infinity of r prime over r. That's gamma to the l p l cos theta. So the potential ends up being 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And this was all defined 1 over the r. So we have the charge. Do we have the charge? 
No, we're doing um, um, we're doing an integral of the sum we just described to the L P L cos theta uh, rho. Okay, so all of this bit is the one over curly r, and we can pull out. We can safely pull out the um, r terms. So we have uh, one over r. Oh, we have one over r as well. Forgot to add that. So we have one over r to the l plus one times the integral of r prime to the l p l cos theta rho d tau. Okay, and this is our uh, potential for any charge distribution written out in a form that draws out the dipole, monopole, quadrupole, octopole terms, etc. Um, and to see kind of what I'm talking about, well, the first term, let's look at the first term. The first term is 1 over r with no r prime. PL is, is 1, so it's just 1 over r rho d tau. Okay, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Okay, the second term is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. 1 over r squared. And then you have the integral of r prime cos theta rho d tau. This would be the dipole term. And then you have the octopole term, or the quadrupole term, which is 1 over r cubed times, you know, r prime squared p2 of cos theta rho d tau, and so on and so forth for the rest of the terms. Um, the interesting bit is that the the monopole term here, and we're going to cover this more in, in the next section, but I just wanted to call your, your attention to it. If you look very closely, this doesn't depend at all on what your, uh, really this r prime cos theta could be rewritten as you know in some coordinate system it's just z you know so it really depends on how the charges are allocated perpendicular to where the position is um, so what do you use this for well if if you have a total net charge and you're far away and the charges are close to the origin then it's really good assumption to use just the total charge you know that's just you know this is just q the total total net charge um, if the total net charge is zero or almost exactly zero, and you're far away, then you have to look at the dipole term. And if this term turns out to be zero, then you have to look at the quadrupole and etc. And this is a really good way of approximating, although this answer is exact, it's a really good way of approximating answers to um, potentials for some seriously complicated charge configurations. All right, thanks for your time.